Well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us. It's lovely to see so many familiar faces and um, for those that I haven't met, I'm not sure uh, Robert or Billy that if we've, we've met before, but um, I'm Lindsay Dunn and I'm Head of Marketing Communications and Events at Buckinghamshire Business First. And um, ultimately we exist to uh, help businesses succeed. And we know that leadership development and peer networking is a really, really important part of that growth um, within businesses. So that, just that conversation, <laughs> you know, it's sharing knowledge and, and, um, and expertise. And we here at Buckinghamshire Business First have been delivering leadership development programs for about, um, six years and um, we know they work. Klaus, who is here, is part of our MD Engage programme and uh, Janet and James have been part of our Peer Engage programme over the last year. Um, but finding the uh, kind of justification to invest in programmes like this can be quite tricky. And that's why we're here today is really to kind of explain some of the benefits of being part of a program like MD Engage or Peer Engage and um, uh, uh, discuss how it might help you and what's involved. So Peer Engage is a purely online um, program. MD Engage to date has been a purely face-to-face -face program, but we know from talking to lots of people over the last uh, couple of years that um, from the purely um, online program, there's a fee sense of kind of that missing of the face-to-face -face engagement. It really does make a difference, but also everybody's busy. So um, that's why we've um, established this new, brand new uh, collaboration with Unthink. Um, and we're very, very excited because we think that this is a, a perfect solution to some of those um, challenges. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Ross in a moment to explain what the programme involves. Um, in terms of the financial investment, it is three and a half thousand plus VAT for um, a, a programme which starts in October and will end uh, uh, in May. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it to, to Ross to, to talk about the roadmap. We are looking to um, build our group um, the deadline to get involved is the 29th of September. So hopefully we'll ask, answer most of your questions um, now. But if you do have any um, questions afterwards, you can contact me or the team at Buckinghamshire Business First. We'll follow up with you by email. And um, uh, we've got a chance now to, um, to, to ask some questions. But I'll hand over to Ross um, to take us through Give us a bit of background to Unthink and um, how we're planning to work together. Yeah, th thanks, Lindsay, and, and look, good morning, everybody. Um, look, this this is a little bit about Unthink, but it's more about you all actually, and, and I'll talk you through the sort of roadmap of the plan. Um, I'm one of the three found, uh, original founders of Unthink. Um, I'm the least interesting founder for sure. Um, unfortunately, you've got me today. Uh, my two colleagues both of whom been five Olympic Games between and won a couple of medals uh, are away with clients in New York this week. So you have got me. Uh, we've got a wider team of, of eight uh, full time. And then we've got uh, about another sort of six or seven uh, people with specialisms uh, from copywriting to coach diagnostics all the way through to uh, sort of also facilitation. Uh, and look, uh, it, is, it is wonderful to do this with we work with organisations from all around the world. I'll share a little bit of who and, and how, uh, but I just want to give a little bit of background because I think it's in, important to actually understand how we approach design, actually what an experience feels like with Unthink. And, and we use this word experience a lot because if I ask you to think a little bit about traditional leadership development, I imagine you've already got in your mind what that might look and feel like, right? And myself, I've worked for the big four from EY to you know Accenture doing this for the best part of 20 years. And it got to a stage a number of years ago, th uh, about three years of 2020, uh, we thought when better to start a business than at the cusp of a pandemic. Um, we thought that's the best time to kick off. And um, we we wanted to change this industry. Uh, we, we were tired of it not moving with what people want, what people need. And I think we've done that. And I think the people we work with is testament to that. So I'm going to share a little bit of stuff. 
and just explain sort of where we've come from. And this is important. We connect the dots between people, learning and experiences. If you think of traditional learning and development, right, they think about learning. They think a little bit about people, but it's traditionally a workshop. It's a one off event where you turn up, you do some stuff. You maybe go to something else, uh, you know, six months down the line or whatever. It's often with a flip chart, some 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 pretty bad coffee, some beige food. And we wanted to change that for sure. If you think about events, agencies, the experience companies, they create something maybe may, may, may wonderful, a conference or an event. However, there's no impact. It's so what? Where's the learning? It's just, a, I guess, I guess an, a, an experience for a day. So we're, we believe we're the first to connect all three. And we do believe that this idea of learning through doing is absolutely critical because it creates memories, impact. And in all honesty, people really bloom and enjoy it. So that's that's what we're about from, from I guess, a, a legacy background. Um, and it got to, like, to, like I said, it got to the stage where look, we can't stay the same. We, we had to do different. It got, we got so frustrated with what normal was. We couldn't go back to normal. And actually, we wanted to change things. So that's why we founded Unthink. And it's grown significantly in the, in the last three years. Um, and, and I think what we are really committed to is working with organizations and people who do want to change and not tick boxes. And what's cool about this opportunity is that you're not being put on it by an organization you're not being forced your hands aren't being held or tied behind your back this is a you know you you are committing to this you're committing your time right now which is wonderful um so we want to work with people that are actually really deeply i guess in bed yeah engage with change and not just looking to tick boxes because it's we often say a lot of things and then we never actually follow through or our energy runs out and and with an unthink program we try and keep that cadence we keep that momentum throughout uh, these are some of the organizations we work with from, you know, if you Google the sort of top 10 uh, largest organizations in the world, we work with three of them. Uh, and, you know, from Apple, Microsoft, Google, all the way to fast start uh, tech startups and companies like Clarity AI, uh, Wave AI and, and, and organizations like that. The main thing is that these organizations have predominantly tried the same thing and got the same results. And I think that's where I think has really created traction and, and created change with the approach that we deliver. Uh, and we just like to have a lot of fun doing it. We get to know people really, really well, and we want to get to know people intimately, and that's where we can really create behavior change. And we've got 100% client re retention, so the organizations for the last three years, we still work with them, and that's important because that, I think that shows the, the legacy of what we're doing, the impact that we're having, uh, and, and also just the relationships we love to build, uh, and, and that's really important too, as we don't just want to have a program and it to end. We want to stick with people and keep working with them. Um, so what does this program actually look like? Uh, the first thing to say is that, yes, we've got like a skeleton outline. Um, but this first part where we would have one to one results based coaching calls with everybody coming into the program, not only to understand like what your expectations are and what you want to get out of it, which is critical to understand where you want to go and how this is going to help. Um, but also a little bit to input on design like we want to co-create this we don't want to just say look here's a here's a skeleton outline you're going to do all of this this is stuff we know works and works really well but if people are saying or we're hearing themes we want to use that to input into design and say actually maybe session two three or four needs a little bit more of this a little bit more of that um we that's what we love to do we work with with that agility to actually design as we go as much as understand I guess the 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 full program in its entirety at a macro level. Um, so understanding like your needs up front is critical. And you'll have a, you know, we work one-on-one -on -one with organizations like exec coaching through to large scale leadership academies. Um, so we would always want to know what it is you want to get out of this program and how this program is going to support you. Uh, the important thing is that we think about the experiences, all right, and just we think of like, if you think of life in any shape or form, it's a series of moments and most are forgettable. You don't remember most things. If I ask you what you did on the weekend, people will probably struggle, but occasionally you get the remarkable. So actually, how is it that we create remarkable moments through learning, through experiences that allow you to actually not just connect with a group, but also take individual learnings that you can take back to your organizations to develop the culture, the performance and your own leadership capabilities. So this 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 uh, program will have those experiences throughout. 
and that comes from venue selection to make it you know and uh, that is your venue sounded incredible it's something we'd love to consider i'm sure for maybe potentially one of these events um but the first one we potentially we would have uh you running a live restaurant um and that would be part of sort of getting to know each other as a cohort working together but also a big focus on ownership mindset well, actually what does accountability mean for me as a leader and in an eq um it's also understanding a little bit where you come from and where you're going but we do that all through an experience where you'd actually be running a live uh, pizza restaurant group coaching would be a drumbeat that would uh, maintain, I guess, the momentum between the face-to-face -face sessions, like Lindsay says. This is where we'd split up potentially a group of 10 into smaller groups of maybe five. And a little bit of like what you're all talking about when you came onto this call, a little chance to connect as well, which is a huge outcome of a program like this. But it is a little bit actually around what the challenges that are going on for you. How can we maybe support each other? What other solutions or ideas people have or experiences people have had to overcome similar challenges and just a little bit of support and challenge to actually work through some of that. And you'd be working with one of our exec coaches uh, in that group coaching uh, facilitation between these sessions. Session two, we believe big time in high performing teams. Like I said, two of the other founders have come from that environment um and that is a that <laughs> we love doing that through uh the, the 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 idea of wheelchair basketball which can bring together not just a team but it's something that nobody's ever done it's a great way of bringing into life the idea of high performance coaching delivering a feedback which is probably the biggest enabler to performance cultures um a little bit of this idea of shifting from what is a leader to actually a coach and how do we empower others and assign responsibility to others in your team it's incredibly impactful doing it through something like uh, wheelchair basketball uh, it would also be done probably in Stoke Mandeville, which is obviously the home of the Paralympics originally. Um, wonderful fun. We've done this with organisations all around the world. It's it's highly immersive. The learning is is significant and uh, you can't fail but to have an impact in actually testing some of the skills that we're, we're, we're imparting with you. Session three, big part of what we believe in is this inclusive leadership. Um, we've got some experts within Unthink Ourselves, so Dr. Adrian Milner, uh, a three-time author and forward-thinking leader in uh, ED&I. Um, but actually, we're looking at what is organisational culture and actually how do we build inclusive teams and inclusive uh, cultures as well. And then the final session is, is kind of like a springboard event. It's a little bit about holding you to account in terms of actually what is it you're going to go away and do and what is it you're going to commit to and how do we hold each other to account to do that. But it's also a lot around actually leading through change and this idea of storytelling. Um, yes, we'll have speakers in almost every single session, but there's also what we call unthink moments to bring those alive. Um, but we do believe storytelling as, as a CEO or an MD or a senior leader is probably one of the greatest skills you can have in bringing people with you on that, that journey of, of high performance, but also change. Um, so we'll be looking at that. But then importantly, like I said, actually action planning to lead out the back of this and what are those things you're going to be doing differently. It's across uh, a pretty long timeline, so there is a little bit of gap between face-to-face -face sessions, but we do keep that drumbeat through the group coaching. Um, and, and of course, we would always, I guess, push this idea of people connecting outside of these sessions as well. We believe in face-to-face, -face, like Lindsay says. We do believe the power of the connection, the human connection, and, and actually businesses learning from each other, similar businesses, size, scale, um, and, and geography in this instance as well. Uh, so I think that the benefits of a program like this are significant beyond your individual capability and competency build. So there's a lot in there. I'm just going to pause because I've just spoken at you for the best part of 10 minutes. Questions, any questions that you might have or th thoughts or reflections from what I've just been talking around? I'll stop sharing as well. Uh, oh, it's, it's a... It's a battle. Who's going first? I saw Abe move. I saw James. I saw Klaus come off. A lot of action. A lot of action. Who wants to go first? We'll let Abe go first because he put his hand up. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good man. Yeah, a little bit more decorum. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Go, Abe. Um, so the first two are kind of activity-based um, uh, things. The next two, so three and four, are they... Are there any activities in that? Or there would there... be, yeah. They're unthink moments. And this is where the, the the design piece that we would understand. What we need to do is understand a little bit actually how far we can push the envelope. I was, I was just on a call with, uh, the, and by the way, this is work-related, not with Bumble, the dating app, right? Uh, so I was speaking to them and 
they they had the same question and i said look we work with all like, like i said like let's take gallagher insurance okay risk uh risk insurance company uh, or you know i guess underwriter in the, in their their entirety right they're not hugely uh adventurous but they they've been doing the same thing for a long time and they came to us and said look we need to shake things up do things differently but they were scared there was a risk tolerance so we need to understand you all a little bit actually how far can we push this um so why we've got like a skeleton outline that first call would actually be really important to understand a little bit of what the what the moments what the experience is that you would like to do as well and try and understand some of those collective themes. So there's no point in us saying you're going to do this, 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 and this, because you might say that now that's not going to land. Right. Um, So we've got some stuff that we use like wheelchair basketball. We know works wherever in the world at any time, at any level, whether you are an exec level uh, board member all the way through to sort of emerging talent. So that's something we know has such a tremendous impact, but other bits, like I said, unthink moments, we want to know from you, where your tolerance levels are what your needs are where where you want to what you would want to do otherwise there's no point in us just dictating that to you that's where co-creation comes in Abe. i think that's important makes perfect sense thank you very much yeah james you were very kind in letting abe and his hand go up first can i come to you that's right um it was time commitment then so i'm assuming yeah. the sessions are full days but yeah um the group coaching bits of a hour half hour all, all day event i don't no, those would be those would be remote as well. So those would actually be the only virtual piece of this, but uh, to not cannibalise time. And we understand that you know people are you know, Bucks is a surprisingly large county, um, so we would we would do those virtually, um, and those would be about sixty minutes, forty five minutes to sixty minutes, depending on group size, right? So at the moment we've got a critical mass of a need of ten. If we were to go to like say. I don't know if they say we had 13, we might split that into three, for example, depending on numbers, uh, size of groups. So we reckon it'd probably be up to a 60 minute virtual commitment. Um, so not dissimilar to this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Klaus, was there a question from you? Yeah. My question was more around, um, um, who kind of the person that is aimed, uh, at. So I'm assuming it is, it is one um leader for that particular program uh that would participate or or is it a leadership team yeah good question this i from from speaking with lindsay and the team of bbf this this would be maybe one or two senior leaders from an organization this wouldn't be a, a bespoke team development journey um that that would be something different i think i think that would be uh intimidating for for others to have you know 10 people from one organization and one yeah. you know one person from others so i think i think you could be one and another or two uh from an organization for sure i think a big benefit of this and what we would definitely want to see as an output is people really connecting as as, as you you lot as a cohort and and building networks and you know, I think that's why the first session would be would be would be so immersive in that respect to get you to work together, regardless of what organisation you come from. But we wouldn't advocate you to bring an entire uh, leadership team and and see that as an HPT journey for for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see senior leaders and high potential? Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to add as well, just at the end, the program, um, where if you join the program, you will then also become an ambassador member of Buckinghamshire Business First, which means that you, um, in between those uh, uh, MD Engage sessions, will have the opportunity to meet at business leaders' dinners or business leaders' lunches. You'll also be invited to some of our invitation-only events like Bank of England panels, um, and that is a business, an ambassador membership for the business as well. So your teams can benefit from those as those um, benefits too. So it's just a, another way of staying connected through the journey. Yeah, I mean, the conversation you all had when you came in here, right, um, is just is a snapshot of, I imagine, some conversations that will, will continue to happen through a programme like this is, you know, what do you do? How do, how do we connect? What is there value we can add to each other or others or, you know, there's always, there's always so much in that networking space.